Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Vardhari Jai Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Pad Paramahansa, Padrika Acharya, Ashtotara, the Dishi Srimad's Divine Grace, Shilei Si Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai, Iskan Bibiti Founder Acharya, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Padrika Acharya, Ashtotara, the Dishi Srimad's Divine Grace, Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai, Ananda Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai, Nama Acharya, Shri Laharidas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhaktivinoda Ki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay, so text 18 today, top of 399. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, give me a second. On this 22nd day of January 2020 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Chapter 9, The Most Confidential Knowledge, text number 18, page 399. Gatir Bhata Prabhu Sakshi Nibhasak Shadanam Surit Prabhavak Palayak Stanam Nidanam Bijam Abhyam Gatir Bhata Prabhu Sakshi Nabasak Shadanam Surit Prabhavak Palayak Stanam Nidanam Bijam Abhyam Gatir Bhata Prabhu Sakshi Nabasak Shadanam Surit Babavak Palayak Stanam Nadanam Bijam Abhyam Gatir 
Kate Bharta Prabhu Sakshi Nivasak Sharanam Surit Prabhavak Pralayak Stanam Nidanam Bijam Abhiham Kate Bharta Prabhu Sakshi Nivasak Sharanam Surit Prabhavak Pralayak Stanam Nidanam Bijam Abhiham Gati Go Bharta Sustainer Prabhu Lord Sakshi Witness Nivasa Abode Sharanam Refuge Surit Most Intimate Friend Prabhava Creation Pralaya Dissolution Stanam Ground Nidanam Resting Place Bijam Seed Abhiham Imperishable Translation, Krishna says, I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything, the resting place, and the eternal seed. Purport. Gati means the destination where we want to go. But the ultimate goal is Krishna, although people do not know it. One who does not know Krishna is misled and his so-called progressive march is either partial or hallucinatory. There are many who make as their destination different demigods, and by rigid performance of the strict respective methods, they reach different planets known as Chandraloka, Suryaloka, Indraloka, Maharloka, etc. But all such lokas or planets, being creations of Krishna, are simultaneously Krishna and not Krishna. Such planets, being manifestations of Krishna's energy, are also Krishna, but actually they serve only as a step forward for realization of Krishna. To approach the different energies of Krishna is to approach Krishna indirectly. One should directly approach Krishna, for that will save time and energy. For example, if there is a possibility of going to the top of a building by the help of an elevator, why should one go by the staircase, step by step? Everything is resting on Krishna's energy. Therefore, without Krishna's shelter, nothing can exist. Krishna is the supreme ruler because everything belongs to him and everything exists on his energy. Krishna, being situated in everyone's heart, is the supreme witness. The residences, countries, or planets on which we live are also Krishna. Krishna is the ultimate goal of shelter, and therefore one should take shelter of Krishna either for protection or for annihilation of his distress. And whenever we have to take protection, we should know that our protection must be a living force. Krishna is the supreme living entity, and since Krishna is the source of our generation, or the Supreme Father, no one can be a better friend than Krishna, nor can anyone be a better well-wisher. Krishna is the original source of creation and the ultimate rest after annihilation. Krishna is therefore the eternal, cause of all causes. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshu Un Militam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So Krishna is making a case here for why all other forms of worship, all other objects of worship, are really self-defeating. Uh, if Krishna is truly the goal, the sustainer, the, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend, why does it make any sense to worship anyone else? Especially since every, everyone else who has one of these qualities to some degree or can put themselves forward uh, as such, are just getting their uh, partial, minute, infinitesimal ability to act like that from Krishna himself. This is the whole argument he's giving here. Um, because the, the real pr problem is, is that we divert our energies. You know, the, in the beginning, in the second chapter, there's a famous verse, Vyavasayatmaka buddhir ekeha kurunandana bohu shakayanantastha buddheo vivasayanam uh, Prabhupada took this verse very importantly. Uh, part of his inspiration was in the commentary. This verse says, one has to have this one-pointed intelligence. 
Vyavasayatmaka buddhi means very uh, focused intelligence and will. Uh, Ekeha, one. Uh, Kurunanda. Bohu shakins and buddhaya vavasayan. If you don't have that, then your intelligence is many branched. It goes everywhere. You see? And that's the general experience that we have as in the material world, the material consciousness, is that there's always some other, we're moving through life. I like to point this out. You know, you can see your whole arc of your life. You come to old age. And uh, as a child, there are so many things that you take to be important. You have a certain vision and view of, the, of, of life that's childish. You haven't been through so much. You don't know that much. But still, for you, this is important, that's important. I like to give the example when I was, what, what do I say, eight or nine, you know, the most important thing in my life was getting a bicycle. I finally got the bicycle. And suddenly my whole uh, world opened up. I, had, I could go much farther, much faster, you know. <laughs> and so I was, you know, I've achieved the goal. Got to you, <laughs> got to you. <laughs> but gradually I got older, I got more involved in school and everything, and I used the lesson that's finally just gathering dust in the basement. You know, I have another goal, many other goals, you know, a certain point in life, the opposite sex comes, and that's really my goal. You know. So that's what life is all about, is take, taking one thing as, a, as important, striving for it, maybe, maybe achieving it, and then, you know, it loses its importance for you. You grow older, whatever, you lose it, you know, breaks, and we go on to something else. So the idea here is Christian present, I am the... The goal, the ultimate goal. Once you reach Krishna, you reach the spiritual world, there's nothing else to strive for. And that he explains in the sixth chapter. You remember that? Prabhupada is fond of quoting this, this uh, phrase. Once having achieved this realization of the Lord in the heart or realization of Krishna, uh, one feels there's nothing more to be, to be gained. And that feeling persists. It's not just, uh, you know, that's just the, uh, uh, it's not maya. It's, 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 it truly is the, the ultimate. Uh, and, and he gives the, the, the two qualifications there for it being the ultimate goal, and that is that there's, a, there's an ever fresh flow of bliss and ananda from being connected to Krishna through service. And at the same time, your distress has shrunk down to zero. So this, so this is really the goal of the soul, of every soul in every species of life. Maximize the happiness, minimize the distress. But you can't do that on the material plane. This, uh, I remember, um, you know, there's so many verses you listen, I listen to the lecture every day. Prabhupada quotes some very often. Uh, back in 84, 85, there's one devotee came from England. I think his name was Rohini Nandan. And he was pre preparing a, a, the first verse book, the book of, of Prabhupada's fame, most quoted verses. And he was going all over the world and, and meeting with devotees. There was, very, there was no computers. There was no email, certainly. You know, so he was traveling all over, looking for insights into what, what verses. You know. I gave him a few from my hearing. He said, oh, thank you so much. It was worth it coming all the way from England to Miami just to see. <laughs> so after a while, you know, studying that book and listening to Prabhupada lectures, there's certain verses that are very, very dear to Prabhupada. He quoted them very often. So there's a few he would quote for the importance of approaching a guru, approaching a realized soul. And one of these was tasman gurum prapadyeta jigyashu shreya uttamam shabde padeta nishnatam brahman upashamashriyam. And what that verse says is therefore, so it's obviously in the middle of a series of verses because therefore means it's a, it's a, it's a logical proof. But I didn't think about that at first. I just memorized tasmat gurum But Therefore, one should uh, seek out and surrender to a, a guru, a spiritual master, jigyasu shreya uttamam. Uh, if you're inquisitive about finding out what is the ultimate good that you can attain and how to, how to find it, how to achieve it. Shreya uttamam. This word shreya keeps coming up. It's there at the beginning of the Gita, chapter 2, text 7, where Arjuna surrenders to Krishna as a guru, rather than arguing with him about how he doesn't want to fight. And he, and he says, uh, at the last line of the verse, Yakshe, Aksyanishitam, Bruhitanmi, Shishishitam, Shadimam, Tvampapannam. 
please tell me what is this Shreya, what is the ultimate good? For certain, you're, you know you're the ultimate guru. I've been spinning out all these theories, but I'm still confused. Yakshreya is a nishtitam, nishtitam for certain, bruitan. I am now your shishya, I'm your disciple. No longer I'm acting as your friend, so get heavy with me, just tell me as it is. Shishyastam shadimam tvam papandam, I surrender to you. So, uh, Krishna, uh, in this verse, in, uh, which happens to be in the 11th Kano, Tasmat Gurum Papadjeta Jigyashu Shreyutamam. The same idea. If you're curious, you're inquisitive about the ultimate good that you can achieve, then approach a, a spiritual master. Well, then the next half of the verse has to well, what's the qualifications? Shabde Pareta Nishnatam Brahman Rupashamashi. Shabde refers to the Shastra, what you hear, the Shabda Brahman. Uh, so, pare nishnatam. So, in these two manifestations of uh, the absolute truth, the shastra and the pare, pare is, is a shorthand for the supreme personality of God. Nishnatam, uh, which is two manifestations of Brahman or the absolute truth, is completely fixed, very well versed in the shastra, and uh, always remembering Krishna. Brahman Upashamashram, and as far as material pleasure goes, completely detached. This is like a shorthand for you can see. So I was curious, the reason I'm bringing this up, I was curious what came before this verse because it, ends, it begins with Tasmat. So I looked it up in the, in the 11th canto, and it's one of the teachings of the nine Yogendras. And what uh, he's teaching there, I forget which Yogendra he's speaking to. He says, and I, I'm sorry, I, the, scan, the Sanskrit kind of skips my mind, but what he's saying there, he's, he's saying uh, that every living being is trying to maximize the pleasure and minimize the pain. But one should see that in the end, you get just the opposite in the material world, just by the force of time. Any, any animal you see, or insect you see, they have their little scope of understanding you know, if I fly here, they know by super soul or instinct, they call it, you know, I'll, I'll find my food and I'll go there, you know, oh, there's danger, let's get out of here, you know, or fight, you know, flight or flight. So it's going on, you know, it's just basic, but it's still the same principle. So as human beings, we have a much more sophisticated standard, but it's the same principle. So one should see that on the material level, uh, to try to do that, you're, you ultimately get just the opposite. All your hopes for happiness are dashed by the, just by the passage of time. You know, your youth goes, your energy goes, he goes, she goes, your money goes, your health certainly goes, you know. And without that, you can't enjoy anything. So it ultimately all ends in, you know, you're lying somewhere, dying, you know. Oh my God, what happened? You know, and then what's, I, I always get, say, <laughs> what happens when you die? The first, the first thing that happens? He goes, oh my God, I'm not dead, right? <laughs> you go up somewhere, you're going to your next body. <laughs> what happened? You know. And then you start over again, <laughs> some other situation. <laughs> again and again and around and around. So therefore, you know, so, so, then, so then he has two or three more verses. And he says, and, and in order to try to enjoy in this world as human beings, you have to have money. You know, it's so hard to get, so hard to keep. He says it's the source of all the suffering. And uh, what does he say? Virtual death for the soul. In other words, to be always meditating on that. This is the, the you know, I keep up with the news and there's a, uh, a term now for the kind of economy we have now, financialization. Financialization. The, 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 so much is, is controlled by what they call the fire F-I-R-E, which is finance, insurance, and real estate. These are the, where all the money is, trillions of dollars, you know. Finan you know, finance, the stock market, and all that stuff. You know. So, but, but have you ever thought of this, that if you get into that, you know, and if you really know how to do it, and you're, just, you're lucky, you know, you can make millions, you know, even billions of this stuff. You're not really producing anything. You're just moving money around and betting on this, and, you know, it's a big... You got to be. You got to be, especially today with you know, 24 hours. I mean, you have to know what the Singapore market is doing, what the New York market is doing, what's happening in San Francisco, so that you practically have to be on the computer all the time. Your head is always in that. You know, <laughs> should I buy or should I sell? Isn't it? <laughs> so, what kind of consciousness is that? You see, that in itself is misery, isn't it? 
So anyway, this is, the, this is what's going on. So then he said, well, what about the heavenly planets? In other words, on this earth, it, it's hopeless. You can't be, you're going to increase the misery and decrease the happiness for sure. So we'll go to the heavenly planets. But he said, no, it's the same thing. You know, you read the Bhagavatam. It's a good part of the Bhagavatam, 6th and 7th canon, is all about the battle of the demons and the demigods. The demigods are evicted from their heavenly planets by the demons. At one point, Bali Maharaj, who turns out to be a great devotee, but he was also the head of the demons there. He was able to take over the, the heavenly planets, Indra and all. They had to go scatter and take refuge somewhere else. And they prayed to the Lord, and, you know, and eventually they get them back. You know. But the same thing. It's still material. And you know, you, there's still... Uh, so much competition going on, and we know what happens to Indra. He always flies off the handle and loses his, you know, and, and, and time after time, right? So he says, that's not going to help you. Neither on this earthly planet or upper planets can you find what you're looking for. Therefore, my guru, if you really want the ultimate good, Shreya, approach a spiritual master who is beyond all that. In other words, a Vaishnava guru. So... Uh, these different elements that Krishna is describing here, we all uh, want the, you know, Gatir, Bharta, uh, Sustainer, Lord, the witness, you know, the witness. Uh, Prabhupada says right in the introduction that Krishna is present in everyone's heart. He's witnessing everything. What does he say in the 13th chapter? Udhar upadrashta anumanta char Bharta boka maheshwara padamatmeti chapyukta dehismin purushakpura. I am in the, in the hearts of all. And I'm, upadrashta literally means overseeing, witnessing. Anumanta, permitting, you know, if our, I mean, you know, he doesn't need a computer, but you can imagine all the different varieties of karma that, that everyone has, everyone's unique, right? So if I want to do something, come to something, we have, the super soul has to check. So well, is it in his karma? You know, is he, is, is he eligible? <laughs> or should I frustrate this one? <laughs> Amazing amount of right information. <laughs> so that's that's you know the witness is there, and we also are looking for an abode and a refuge. And this word surit is so important. Prabhupada, Krishna says, the end of the fifth chapter, Sudasam Sarva Bhuta Nam Gatva Mam Shantam Richati. One who knows I'm the enjoyer of all the sacrifices and penances, the master of the whole of worlds, Bharta Bhuktaram Yagita Pasang. Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, Suridam Sarva Bhutanam. Now Prabhupada focuses on this word Surit. There's diff- just like in English, we have, uh, he's an acquaintance of mine, or he's a friend, or he's my bosom buddy. You know, that's the closest we got to Surit, right, bosom buddy. Someone who's your, your, your best friend, who you really go out for. But Surit is someone who always has your best welfare and, and, and heart. You can't find that in a material plane, you know. So there's always a limit to how far, how far you can put out even for your best friend. <laughs> you know. But there's no limit. Krishna has been traveling with us for time immemorial as a super soul, trying to give us good instruction, reminding us of how to act to fulfill our karma and giving us intelligence, knowledge, remembrance. So he's our best friend. The problem is we don't know it. We've completely forgotten him. And we're looking outside. So, Prabhavak Palayakstanam, if he is the source of creation and also the source of all destruction, then it, it's foolish to look elsewhere for some other lord or shelter or, or, or you know, uh, anything. He's, he's, he's the one who we can go to to fulfill all our needs. Bijam Abhiyam in the eternal seed. So, what he's, what he's describing here is that he's the one we should go to. Don't go, to, don't go to any demigod. And he's going to make that case even more in the, in the next, uh, in the text 20 and 21, which are coming up very soon. Maybe we'll get to them tonight. Is that even, even if you succeed and you're able to go to those heavenly planets, to the demigods who are also mortal, they eventually have to leave the planets themselves. And you may find yourself there in London, under the gardens, you know, enjoying like anything. But you should know, before you work really hard to get there, you know, and spend all that money hiring the Brahmins to do the sacrifices. <laughs> that uh, you have to come back down here again. It's just temporary. <laughs> it's all temporary. <laughs> so you're wasting your time. That material life means wasting time, becoming diverted from our actual goal. <laughs> Got any, any discussion on this uh, verse? Yes, people. Um, uh, Maybe we should activate, because you're answering. 
we have mics because there's an internet crowd. We always forget. Can, can I get it? For this one, I'll repeat the question. Go ahead. Uh huh. So why are they engaged in that? In the Rajasuya. Same, you know, argument. Okay. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Uh, so the question was uh, he's referring to the Garga Samhita, and uh, Pradumna has gotten everybody to surrender for the Rajasuya sacrifice. The idea of the Rajasuya is that it, it, it confirms the rule of the emperor. That you, that you go around, you get tribute from all the different kings, this is different kings of different provinces, different leaders. And if they don't offer tribute, recognizing the leadership of the emperor, then there's a battle. And they, they're subdued and they have, to, they have to give tribute. So you're saying that for this Rajasuya that Yudhishthira performed? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, what's the point? Why do they need to? Like, that's, what's, why was that what's the point of... But, yeah, yeah. The thing is that, you know, you, you may say, well, what's, what's the need of even putting Yudhishthira on the throne because Krishna is there? But, but, the, but the whole idea is, you know, Krishna's strategy there is to, is to build up Yudhishthira because Krishna doesn't, doesn't, doesn't want to take the role. Even in Dwarka, he wasn't the king. Although everyone recognized him as the Supreme Person, they've got it. But he put Yudhishthira up as, as the king. You know, because he, he, he wants <coughs> the earth to be ruled according to, uh, you know, saintly qualities. He wants saintly qualities in the king, certainly. But he doesn't want to take it over. It's just like, it's the same question individuals ask. Okay, you know, why is it such a, such a trip? You know, if Krishna wants us to surrender, then make us surrender and, you know, you know <laughs> instead of... You know, because we're going to make a, you know, chances are we'll make a mess of it, you know, and have to come back again, to, you know, in the next, next birth. So just, you know, tie us up, take us back to Godhead, you know. But the whole idea is that, that Krishna doesn't take away, I was just hearing Prabhupada talk about this today, uh, our freedom of choice. And it all comes back to the idea of devotion, that it has to be freely given. This is what is, this is what's pleasing to Krishna, ultimately. So, Krishna's, uh, oh, oh, you know, the, the fact that Yudhishthira chose to put on the Rajasuya sacrifice, and what was the purpose? One of the purposes to put Krishna on the top. That whole who's going to be worshipped first is such an important part of that, you know. Uh, there's a ceremony, who's going to be the first worshipped in this big Rajasuya sacrifice. So, of course, all of his devotees and uh, Sahadeva gave a great speech. He was one of the Pandavas. Uh, saying that the only person that's eligible is Krishna himself. And uh, who was it who disagreed? The one who tried to marry Rukmini. Shishupal. Shishupal. So this, this Shishupal was one of the pair of Jaya and Vijaya who was born. You know, first it's Haranyaksha and Ranyakashipu. They're great devotees, but they're covered over, which illustrates how every soul was a devotee but now we've come down to this point, and some of us are really demonic, but deep down in there, we're all devotees. So Shishupal, he, he, he somehow was born insulting Krishna. You know, the first word out of his mouth wasn't mama, it was like, Krishna stinks, or whatever it was. You know, he, had, he had a certain number of, 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 of insults that he was going to give to Krishna. And he was an arch enemy. Plus, Krishna stole his wife, Rukmi, Rukmini's brother was all set, was one of his allies, and he wanted to give his sister, you know, to Shishupal. So Rukmini didn't like that idea. Remember that? Yeah. So, so she wrote a letter to Krishna. She sent a letter by a Brahmin. Uh, Please save me, you know, because I'm in love with you. You know, I've heard about you, and I only want you. And so Krishna says, okay. And he gets on these horses, and he rides, you know. He, kidna he kidnaps her. So here's poor old Shishupal, you know. <laughs> and uh, he already hates Krishna. And uh, Rukmi assures him everything's okay. We got it all planned out, you know. Jarasan's over here. They brought all these allies. And Krishna comes and kidnaps her. 
and there's a big battle, and Shishapal loses, and, and everyone else says, well, what are we fighting for Shishapal and for other? We're going home. And so, you know, so that's another reason to hate Krishna. So when this Rajasuya sacrifice comes, he, his only purpose of going was just so he could throw insults at Krishna, and that he was going to be worshipped first. This was the, the last straw. So he gets up and starts, you know, uh, insulting and blaspheming and blaspheming. And Bhima and, and others, and, you know, are ready to fight him. Many left, the, left the, the hall because they didn't want to hear it, you know. And so uh, Krishna says, no, 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 I mean, cool it out, cool it out, you know. So he had a certain number of insults that he was due. I think it was a hundred or something. It didn't sound like very much. but So after he threw that hundredth insult, then Krishna took the chakra and chopped off his head. You know, boom, I mean, at a distance, you know, boom. And everyone was shocked, you know, and sweep it up, get him out of here, and go on with the ceremony. <laughs> so, you know, we would have missed all that without, you know, <laughs> Rajasuya. So Krishna, it's for his leela. He wants to see, you know, the, the great effort that his, his great devotees like Yudhishthira will put on and, you know, take the role and, and all these things. He doesn't, uh, impose. I mean, he, he does at certain times, but but uh, he he doesn't make a you know a permanent solution or anything. He's, he's there for some time, giving his instruction, killing the demons, putting the devotees in place, and then he leaves. You know, because it has to be our own uh, free will that that is active. That's the idea. Okay, let's go on because this point is going to be uh, brought home in the next few verses. So he's continuing to say, "I am this. I am that." Oh Arjun, I give heat and I withhold and send forth the rain. I am immortality and I am also death personified. Both spirit and matter are in me. Purport. Krishna, by his different energies, diffuses heat and light through the agency of electricity and the sun. During the summer season, it is Krishna who checks rain from falling from the sky, and then during the rainy season, he gives unceasing torrents of rain. The energy which sustains us by prolonging the duration of our life is Krishna, and Krishna meets us at the end as death. By analyzing all these different energies of Krishna, one can ascertain that for Krishna there is no distinction between matter and spirit. Or in other words, he is both matter and spirit. In the advanced stage of Krishna consciousness, one therefore makes no such distinctions. He sees only Krishna in everything. Since Krishna is both matter and spirit, the gigantic universal form comprising all material manifestations is also Krishna and his pastimes in Vrindavan as two-handed Shamasundar playing on a flute, of those of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there's a recurring theme here. We saw it in the seventh chapter. We're going to see it in the tenth chapter. And that is how Krishna is uh, helping us to see him everywhere, even in the, through the material energy. Because the, the, our basic uh, ignorance is that we've cut off, you know, due to our uh, covered knowledge and vision, we're cutting off the energy from the energetic. We're forgetting the source and we're just dealing with the uh, effects, with this external energy. And that's the material consciousness, you know. As human beings, we have a, a higher brain power, more intelligence, you know, than the animals. But if we use it simply in this, to the same basic purpose of manipulating, manipulating the material energy to try to enjoy then our life is no better than the animals and we should probably use the human form of, form of life and go back down again. The human life is especially meant for inquiring into these ultimate questions and making a solution to the puzzle of life. We're stuck in these temporary bodies. We ourselves are eternal. We're full of knowledge, full of bliss. But that nature is unknown to us. It's been covered. And so we try to, to uh, achieve that end very pathetically you know, through the material energy, which is impossible. Material energy means temporary. You know, there's these phrases, bhava sindhu, bhava sagra. Bhava means becoming, changing. And it's come to mean changing. Yeah, the main change, birth, old age, disease, death. Birth, old age, disease, death. So in that changing ocean, you know, waves coming here and there, how can you be peaceful? How can you be happy? 
We really are in a very dangerous situation. Sometimes it's said like, like a forest fire, another very dangerous situation. You know, you can't be peaceful in a forest fire. You have to try to get out, you know. So how to get out? You can't get out, you know, on your own. You're surrounded. It's a so that, that's, uh, you know, the, the, our basic situation. Until we understand that, then we're just living a, a dream life. Uh, you know, really deluding ourselves that somehow or other there's a, we can make a solution to our problems on this platform, you know, through the material energy. It can't be. So the, the idea is that this material energy, just as I was thinking as I was chanting my rounds this morning early, you know, about this, the temple, you know, I spend, <laughs> I've been coming here four hours every morning for the last million years, you know. And so uh, this is a good part of my home is right here in this, in this room. <laughs> And so I'm looking at everything, and I, I, I realize everything here, you know, they're, they're similar to things outside. There's chairs here, there's chairs everywhere, you know. But these particular chairs, this particular floor, all of these things, they're, they're uh, personally or, or uh, specifically related to Krishna, to, to glorifying him. Human beings have put it together in such a way that it reminds you of Krishna, whether it's these little you know, fairly crude little uh, freezes here, you know, or the nice, it's all Christian servant. And so, you know, I, I was realizing, well, this is like the spiritual world. Because in the spiritual world, you know, everything is alive. Because here I'm not deluding myself, but the chairs are actually consciously thinking, you know, boy, when are the devotees going to sit down on me so I can do some service, you know, like. <laughs> but, but there's a certain element of that. And that's really, that, that really is what's happening because even, you know, in every bit of the material world, it's directly related to Krishna. Now, it's not serving him directly, his interests, but it is directly connected to him. Just like Prabhupada, how many times he gives this analogy of the, the mother loves the child, first day of school, the child is away for the first time, you know, in, grade, in pre kindergarten or whatever it is, preschool. And uh, so the mother's going, going into the kid's room and it's cleaning up, you know, and here she sees, oh, this is one of the shoes. Look, he left the sh one of his little shoes under the bed. Oh, my God, you know. So many memories from that shoe, you know. <laughs> Tears are coming, you know. It's just a piece of leather, probably. But uh, because the mother loves the child and, and, and the shoe is related to the child, therefore the, sh the shoe brings out so many emotions. So that's what, that's what uh, the art and science of Krishna consciousness is, is using this external energy in such a way, under guidance of realized souls, that it can connect us to Krishna. You know, what's the, I mean, you know, the big jugger goes on every day in this kitchen, right? There's all these pots. I go in there and do my little thing of, now I've, got, I've added something. My, 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 I, do, I do the uh, apricots. You know, I've been doing apricots. He knows sometimes he's there. <laughs> So I come in, we, have the, the, we soak them for a certain amount of time, not too long, not too, not too, too less. That's been worked out by Jagannath Tirta, you remember? And now I realize we've got to wash these off. We've got to rinse them off before I soak them. These <laughs> people are not doing it. So I've added that. And, and you know, every pot, every, every little cup, every, every serving spoon, every implement there is a special, special because it's used in Krishna's service, right? So it's in his constitutional position. It's, it's helping us to see the connection of everything in this world to Krishna. Now, of course, when we leave the temple, go on the street and everything, if we're, if we're on a mission for Krishna, we can feel, okay, I'm driving this car, I'm doing this, you know, I'm going out, I'm going to be preaching, I'm going to be chanting, you know. So you can feel, that, yes, that everything is nicely situated. And I'm, it's a source of bliss, in other words. This is the idea, is that these things all help to remind us of Krishna. And that's why it is said, Vishram Purna Sukhayate, that the, the great devotees, uh, this is great verse by, uh, by Prabodhananda Saraswati in his Chaitanya Chandramita. Is that the book? Yeah. Kaibal Yang Narakayate, Chita Supur Akasha Pushpayate, Durdan Dendri Akata Sapapatadi Prokata Dang Shrayate, Vishwang Purna Sukhayate, Bidi Mahindras Chita Kitayate, it karunya katak survivor babatam tam goname vastama. I worship Lord Chaitanya, those who are empowered by his merciful sidelong glance, you know, due to surrender and Krishna consciousness preaching. Then they have this mentality Kaivalyam Natakayati. 
Kaivalya is kind of shorthand. It means oneness. It's impersonal realization, merging into the Brahman, losing your personal identity. It's just like going to hell. You know? The things that the Brahma bodies, the Maya bodies aspire for, because it's the end of all suffering. Oh, how wonderful that is. You know? <laughs> but isn't that kind of just like half a loaf? You know? That's, that's, that's the part of dukkha That's the part of get, getting rid of the misery. But what about the bliss side of increasing the happiness? <laughs> happiness does, doesn't mean getting free of all pain. You know? There's a certain positive bliss to be had in personal relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. And rasa. There's no rasa in just getting rid of pain. So he said, Kaiva am not a kai. To Dashapura Akasha Pushpayate. That's directly related to what we're going to read in the next verse, which we may not reach tonight. And that is uh, the heavenly planets, you know, and all of these wonderful delights, the gardens with the nymphs you know, dancing around on the minute sense gratification. You know, that's Tri Dashapur. That, it's, uh, that's shorthand for all the 33 million demigods in their heavenly planets. Tri Dashapur Akasha Pushpa means it's as, as meaningful and as, as, as uh, worth aspiring for as a sky flower. Is there a sky flower? No. It's just, an, it's just an illusion, an imagination. So that's how important it is to someone who's been empowered by Lord Chaitanya. Then, the yogis. So you got the, the uh, 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 what is it, the, the, the Brahmavadis, you got the impersonalists, you've got the uh, Karmakandis trying to go to heaven. Now you have the yogis, you know, so who are trying to overcome the senses, you know, and get to, get to cities, you know. So it's hard to do that. So his Durdan Dendri Akada Sarvapatali Pot Kata Dangstrayate. Durdan Dendri means uh, the very difficult contr- to control senses. Dur, Dur means hard. Danta means control. Indriya sense. Durdan Dendriya were just like poisonous serpents with fangs, you know, ready to bite you. Mm-hmm. Bilvamangal Thakur, you know, he was a great devotee, and he, but he was attracted to the opposite sex too much. And so he finally decided to go to Vrindavan. He was inspired by Chintamani. On the way, he sees some beautiful woman and he just follows her into her home, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, he was a Brahmin and these were like simple Vaishas. So the, the lady says, oh, you know, my dear husband, this man is following me. He says, yes, yeah, so he's a Brahmin, so give him whatever he wants. So <laughs> Bill Mana said, how degraded I've become. So it's kind of, you know, chastening. So he says, oh, Manaji, can you loan me your hairpins for a minute? You know, sure, whatever you want. Bro. He gives him the hairpins and he puts his eyes out. Yeah, puts his eyes out because these eyes are my enemies. They're taking me from Krishna. So he became blind and then he proceeded on to Vrindavan. But he lived for another 700 years. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, I've heard it twice probably, but he lived for 800 years in Vrindavan. But he became this great poet and he would, he would write so many verses where Krishna is appearing before him. See, in his, in his mind's eye, you know. Anyway, so the senses are very difficult to control, like poisonous serpents, but once you're, they're all engaged in Krishna's service, the senses are still there, but they've had their fangs removed. The, the serpents have had their fangs removed, meaning they can't hurt you. Because if you see anything, you see Krishna everywhere. You hear, you just want to hear about Krishna. You know, if you're really advanced, then, then the, the senses are, are controlled in that way. That's the only way to really control them. And then he says, Vishwam Purna Sukhayate, and this is why I brought this verse up. The whole universe is filled with joy for you. You see Krishna's pastimes everywhere going on. You know. uh, although you feel sorry for others who don't have Krishna kind, you try to give it to him, just like Pallad. And then, just very pertinent to what we're reading, Vidi Mahindra Chikitayate. Vidim is short for Brahma, full of knowledge, Vedas. Mahindra, Indra. Indra. Uh, and all the other demigods are no more important to you as insects. In other words, you, you, you give them respect, but you're not going to worship them. They don't have anything you want. You know, you know it's a diversion to try to go to the heavenly planets. So this is the, this is the state of mind of an empowered devotee of Krishna, is that they're really immune to the wiles of maya. That there, there's, there's no, there's no uh, you know, instant in which they're going to deviate. Because they're feeling the constant flow of that bliss and that ananda of serving Krishna. So how could they possibly deviate? If you're, if you're constantly drinking nectar, why are you going to go and drink poison? You know? It's just because we've forgotten it. We've, we've turned away from it. Therefore, we're looking for this maya sukhaya. You know? so, so that's the, the answer. 
All right, let's do one of these verses. This is the one I wanted to do. Okay, you have a comment? We have a mic for you. I heard there were no temples until Chitanya. Oh, there were temples, for sure. Here, put it up. No, in the Chitanya Charitamrita? That there were no temples in India? There were no temples to Krishna until Chaitanya. Oh, you mean the threefold bending form? I don't think that's true. No. No. It was, uh, no, that's I not was true like, because. How can that be? It's not true. Yeah, uh, when Lord Chaitanya uh, took sannyas, and he w went to, uh, he ended up going to Puri. He started going Vrindavan with Nityananda, and then uh, they tricked him and brought him back to Shantipur, and he uh, uh, promised his mother. His mother, you know, asked him to promise that he would stay in Puri as his headquarters so she'd get some news because it's not all that far from Bengal, you know. So he ended up doing that. He started, and then he started going to, 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 to Jagannath Puri with Nityananda and I think Gadarda was with him and a few others. And along the way, uh, they, they stopped here and there and, and described how he was telling the story. Yes, I think, Madhur, I think uh, Lord Chaitanya told this story of Shakshi Gopal. Shakshi, Go, Shakshi Gopal means the Gopal, uh, not, no, not Shakshi Gopal, uh, Chirachora Gopinath, Chirachora Gopinath. So Chirachora Gopinath means uh, Gopinath who stole the sweet rice or stole the kheer, the condensed milk, for uh, Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was a couple of generations before Lord Chaitanya. He was the spiritual master of uh, Nityananda, and Ishwar Puri, who Lord Chaitanya took initiation from. So it was definitely before Lord Chaitanya's time. And this is a historical story that happened before. Uh, and was, there's a temple there in Ramuna, I believe, where this deity is there alone. It's not with Radharani. It's a single Krishna deity. And uh, traditionally, he had been offered this 12 little pots of this uh, specially prepared kheer every, every day or every evening. And it was world, you know, it was famous throughout India for the taste of fine, you know, offering. So when Madhavendra Puri came there, uh, it, it's a wonderful story. He had he had installed a Gopal in Vrindavan. He went to Vrindavan, and uh, he was so advanced he wouldn't beg. As sannyasis, they they can beg, you know, from door to door once a day. Madhukari means I take the profession of a bee, go to flower to flower. They go to home to home. They don't get too attached to anywhere, you know. But he wouldn't even do that. He would just fast unless someone came and gave him something. So he's sitting in Vrindavan, and uh, he's not eating. He's not, you know, he's, he's just chanting. And so Krishna comes, kind of in disguise as a coward boy, or you know, and he offers him a pot of milk. And he says, well, "Where did you come from?" Well, you know, it's my village. Nobody fasts here. If someone doesn't have anything, then I give him some milk. You know, something like. So okay, it makes sense. I guess. So he, he gave him the milk and then he left. And he, uh, he, he thought, he, he said, okay, when well, you come back, I'll give you the pot back, you know. So he drank the milk and had the pot, but the boy never came back. And finally Madhavan says, oh, that was Krishna himself. He came and gave me the milk. <laughs> so so he, uh, he goes into ecstasy. I, th I think he broke the pot into little pieces and he, each day he had a little tiny piece of it. So anyway, he dreams. A lot of this passage goes on in dreams. So he's dreaming. You'll read this. And you go to the Madhya Lila. You're not in the Madhya Lila yet. <laughs> She's got the CC now. <laughs> and uh, so he goes, to, he, he goes to sleep and has a dream. And in the dream, Krishna comes to him. And he says, look, I'm buried you know, as a deity form in, in, the, uh, in the forest nearby here. Because the Muslims came and the, and the, the Pujaris ran out, out of the temple with me and they put me in and buried me to keep me safe. But I've been here a long time. I've been waiting for you. Now come on and dig me up and you know and give me a temple. So Madhavan he gets up and says, "Oh, okay. I've had this Krishna came in a dream." So he gathers some, some townsmen around, tells them what happened. Let's go. Let's you know go through the forest, bring some choppers. You know, so they go and. Sure enough, there's a deity there, you know, and they bring the deity out, and they install him on Govardhan Hill. Yeah. And it was a big ceremony day after day. <laughs> and so, uh, so then, 
Uh, Madhavendra arranged this whole temple and there's some pajaris and everything. And then he has another dream. And the deity, Gop, uh, Gopal, uh, he says, I'm still hot, you know. I was very hot in that, buried in that land. So now go to Puri and get some sandalwood pulp. Sandalwood is very cooling, you know. So Madhavendra wakes up, okay, I got my water, you know. It's like a thousand mile trek. Uh, so uh, off he goes. Uh, with some, a couple of helpers. And along the way, he comes to this town. Uh, is this it? I think, yeah. Was that how it worked? Ramuna? I think, yeah, yeah. Was he alone? No, he came, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes to, he's there, and uh, he sees Chirikura Gopinath. He'd heard about this deity. And so, uh, the sweet rice. So he sees they're getting ready to make the offering, and he says, Oh, I wish I could taste some of that sweet rice and I could know what's in it and I could prepare some, I could prepare some for my Gopal in uh, Vrindavan. But as soon as he thinks, it's, oh my God, what have I done? A big offense. I've wanted to taste something before it's been offered to the deity. This is an offense. You know, this is why they put covers on the plates. I don't know if you've ever been back there. <laughs> so he, he feels he makes a great offense. So he goes out into the marketplace and he just, he's fasting. He's just chanting. You know, like. So... Uh, they make the offering, and then during the night, the Bajari has a dream, another dream. And, uh, and, and, and Gopinath comes to him in the dream and says, listen, I've hidden one of the pots you didn't notice, one of those 12 pots I've, I've hidden behind my cloth from Madhavendra Puri, because he wanted to taste it. So now you go out and you give it to him. You know? So the Bajari wakes up and says, oh my God, that was Gopinath in the dream. So it says, he thought it was a good idea. I should probably shower first before going on the altar. So he takes a shower. It's right in the book. So he goes there, and sure enough, behind the curtain, there's, a, there's a, one pot saved, you know. So then he, he, he was instructed. So he takes the pot. He goes out into the marketplaces. Madhavendra Puri, Madhavendra Puri, come and get this, uh, this uh, cheer that Gopinath has, has put aside for you, has stolen for you. And uh, <laughs> so Madhavendra comes out, you know. And uh, he realizes, you know, he's in ecstasy because this is a reciprocation from the Lord directly. So he drinks, drinks it, you know, and then he, and this is where I think he broke the pot and ate it a little bit. So then he realizes, oh, I'm going to become really famous, so I don't want to, you know, get all that fame. He wants to, so he goes off to Puri, continue on his way. And, um, but by the time he gets there, everybody's heard the story, so he's already famous, you know, like that. So uh, he, he, gets, he gets the sandalwood. It's like 80 pounds. He has to have some, some helpers come, you know, and this camphor too, because you have to mix the camphor. So he's carrying it back. And it's kind of miraculous, because there's all these tax collectors and everything. Uh, but they all let him through, because he's you know, such a saintly person. He comes back to Ramuna. And uh, he, uh, another dream, you know. He <laughs> gets some sweet rice. Another dream. And uh, in the dream, Gopal from Vrindavan appears in his dream and says, all right, look, you don't have to drag it all the way back here because Ramuna is very close. It was just a show. Uh, you just put it on Gopinad. It's summer season by now. And uh, I'm non different from him. I'll also feel cooled, you know. So Madhavendra wakes up. Okay, well, that's, I got to you know, obey the instructions of Gopal, you know. So he gives this, all this sandalwood, very rare, expensive, to the Bajaris in Ramuna who are ex really ecstatic. Wow, it's summer season. We're going to get all this valuable sandalwood, you know. So they play it, apply it on him. And then he stays there. I think he stayed there for some time. So the idea is that there was a temple of Krishna before Lord Chaitanya, <laughs> many of them. All right, we've kind of run out of time. So we'll, we'll pick this up uh, on Monday. And um, these two verses, Tri Vidya Mama Somapada. Did we do Tapamya Hama Hama I don't know if we did that one. Yes, I think we did that. Okay, yeah, we did that. Uh, so, text 20 on Monday. Thank you for coming. And anyone on the internet? Thank you for your attention. <laughs>